It is Foster Care Awareness Month, <clears throat> excuse me, and joining us to share more is our own Terry Musin from the 700 Club. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> we you. always it's love nice to be you. with you. <laughs> Would you share a little bit with the audience about your journey with fostering and adopting? Yeah, well, I, I did not foster, um, uh, though I deeply admire those who do. I have family members who have. Um, you know, our own journey was one of, we knew before we were married that we wanted to adopt. Um, I, I guess just recognizing that there were children who needed to have family and who needed to belong, and mm -hmm. and we recognized the importance of that. So um, we actually, when we didn't know, it was a later marriage for both of us, we didn't know if we'd be able to have children right away. And so we uh, had our, we got pregnant with our first son, and on his first birthday, we were at the adoption agency wow. <laughs> and applied. And then that adoption fell through. You know, mm. all journeys are not smooth. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then I was pregnant with our uh, second child, and on her first birthday, we were back at the adoption agency wow. <laughs> applying again. And um, our kids are all two years apart and very planned and very wanted. I think that's such an important thing to children, to know that they're wanted, mm. to know that there's something significant about them. We have a, um, a very international, if you will, yeah. <laughs> family. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, we have a son who is Korean. We have a son who is uh, uh, biracial. We have three sisters that are okay. our daughters that yeah. are from the Ukraine and yeah. from Ukraine, not the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that was part of our heart also, mm -hmm. I think, was... Um, was seeing the value in all children mm -hmm. and wanting to um, wanting to celebrate that. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we weren't on some kind of a social mission of any yeah. kind, you know, but we just really found satisfaction and joy in that ourselves. Wow. Um, it's not been without challenges. You know? Yeah. Well, what are some of those challenges? I mean, because as you said, it's it's not a perfect journey. Yeah. I mean, even if you're trying to start your own family biologically, that's, that can be a difficult journey Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. But then adding yeah. the adoption process or foster care yeah. process, what has God really taught you? I mean, I'm sure it's a yeah. lot of things. What's like Ooh, the top yeah. two, top three? <laughs> My well, goodness. that all children are valuable and need mm, to belong. Amen. Um, and that that's that sometimes you can offer that knowledge and that teaching and that nurture and love to them. But there is in the heart of an adopted child, I think, deep, even whether they're adopted as infants, which our two boys were, or yeah. our three younger daughter, youngest daughters, um, mm -hmm. a sense of why, why am I not with my biological parents? Yeah. Why am I here? There's a bit of an abandonment issue mm -hmm. in there. And, you know, you have to be careful that you don't, that that doesn't become an issue for you because your need to be loved yeah. by them is so mm -hmm. great that you can't, you, you need to be the grown up. You yeah. know, you need to rise mm -hmm. above that, not be threatened by it, and be mm -hmm. consistent in yeah. your relationship and your, your faith, your treatment of them. Yeah. yeah. For, oh, go ahead. Go ahead I was just going to say, have you found, like, is there really a healing process and journey for them? Like, is there a cure? I would imagine it's the love of Christ, but you still have to process and journey through that. Sure. Have and maybe the most challenging part of that is that every child walks that journey individually. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. works for one may, or what, what truth is found to be satisfying yeah. to one may not yet be revealed to another. And so um, loving them through difficult times, you know, in that piece with the foster couple where, you know, the mom said, um, well, children are so easy to love. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 And sometimes, you know, you really have to be able to step back and go to the heart of yeah. why is this behavior here? And, and as the dad said, cry with them wow. in that place of mourning, mm -hmm. of now, loss. Some, some people may be considering fostering, perhaps not adopting, but fostering. You personally never fostered, but can you help people understand a little bit more about that system? Yeah. It's, um, well, it's an incredibly important system. It's a system that probably needs a lot of reworking and massaging because there are so many children yeah. and there are not enough people willing to take them in. And part of that reason is um, we tend to go to our own need in something like that and say, well, I could never learn to love a child and care for a child and then have them removed from my care. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're fostering, it can't be about you. Wow. 
you don't foster children for that reason. You foster children because they have a need. Mm -hmm. And God has called you to step into that. Yeah. It is hard. It, it Well, you know, all, can I just say, isn't all parenting sacrificial? Absolutely. I mean, yes. But then to be able to let go and sometimes let go back to the family that mm -hmm. they came from. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a challenge. It, you need to be called by the Lord to that. Yeah. I used to say, if you have an empty room in your house, an empty bed in your home, room yeah. in your heart, I, I don't say that so glibly <laughs> anymore because I think a prerequisite, whether it's to fostering or adoption, needs to be to find out what are what are the pitfalls? What are yeah. the challenges? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the things that, that we might face that, not that we don't do it because yeah. if God calls us to it, we do it, but that we do it with knowledge mm -hmm. and we do it with a kind of a um, reckless faith, you yeah. know, that says, God's called me to this. He's going to be there. I can't have all the answers because mm -hmm. that's not the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, yeah. some children have bounced around, so oh, to speak, in the so foster care house. system. Yeah. Yeah. I met someone it's... once who had been in 11 foster oh, homes goodness. before graduating from high school. Now, yeah. how do you then go out into the world and bond, exactly. have yeah. your own family? Mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you believe in, in the value of mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. when you just keep getting shuffled from place to place. Yeah, so. and I've just I've heard just some of the stats of of percentage of young individuals who age out of the mm -hmm. foster care system. Yes. Yeah. And the percentage of them being incarcerated after that because they're Huge. not given the everyday life skills, yeah. learning how to do life. They've been bouncing around from family to family. It's, those, it's just sad. Those very stats are the reason that we, uh, apart from God's urging, yeah. went to Ukraine to adopt our daughters because wow. they were 9, 11, and 13. Um, in a lot of countries, not just Ukraine, they age out at 16. Wow. And so, you know, we thought if we don't go, we wanted them to be able to stay together. If we don't go, they are you know, subject to potentially drug and alcohol use, to prostitution, yeah. to death, really, mm -hmm. because there's no, there is no foster system yeah. in some of these countries. And yeah. so um, you go to make a difference. You Absolutely. Know? Well, what is Orphan's Promise? I mean, we should, there I don't know. making a difference Yeah, right there. you guys <laughs> yeah. are truly making a difference. Even though you didn't foster children, you adopted them. That's your personal journey. But Orphan's Promise is the organization that's a part of CBN that you founded. And you, what are you guys doing to kind of come alongside foster families, foster organizations that help the foster care system? What are you guys doing? Well, in the United States, the system is the system. Mm -hmm. We can't come alongside of it and mm -hmm. add to it because it's not open to that. Okay. Okay. But what we do have is after-school tutoring programs in the United awesome. States because there are a lot of kids who, um, in poverty, parents work when their job requires them to work. Sometimes yeah. there's nobody there to come home to after school. There's nobody there to help with. So, so you, this cycle yep. starts, you yep. know. Um, around the world, we have an opportunity to work with kids in strengthening them in their own countries, which I think is huge. Yeah. Not all children are supposed to come out of their countries and come to the United States True. and be raised raised in, in America, mm -hmm. but they are meant to flourish. They are meant to be loved and yes. appreciated, to accomplish. You know, I always say to our people, you never know when you're raising the next king. Yeah, you're so right. And I will say one thing that I love about Orphan's Promise is you guys do whatever you can to keep families together. Yeah. Like that's number one for you guys because you understand yeah. the power of family. And then if there are situations where ki children aren't able to be with their families, you also come alongside of them. So you I know, love that. The reason children are in orphanages is because their family can't keep them. And sometimes poverty is the exactly. only issue yeah. in that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if we can offer a micro enterprise yep. opportunity to a parent, often it's single parents yes. or parents yep. who are trying to keep their family together, how wonderful every child wants to be in their yeah. biological family if it's healthy and yes, safe, absolutely. you know? Yeah, yeah, I love that. How can people make a difference? They want to get on board. Maybe they'd like to support Orphan's Promise. They don't feel called to foster yet or right. adopt, but right. Orphan's Promise can help them make a difference. You know, we don't all do mm -hmm. one thing. <laughs> You know, yeah. You yeah. Know, there are the goers and there are the senders. And so if you'd mm. like to support Orphan's Promise, orphanspromise.org is where you can find out how to do that. We also, for people who are contemplating this, we have a um, series called um, Adoption and Foster Rx. It's a video wow. series where we interviewed people
people who help us understand the developmental issues that are involved in all of this for children. And that's yeah. also available on our website. So you can check that out. Yay. Yeah. All right. Well, Terry, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for everything that you're doing that Orphans Promise is doing. Mm. Truly, you're making a difference. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's a privilege to get to do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you are watching at home and this is stirring your heart, make sure you visit orphanspromise.org and consider partnering with them to bring love and help and hope to children and families around the world. You won't regret it. Hey, everyone. I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.